Hello and welcome as we head into the fourth day of May 2017 and the price of Bitcoin has surpassed the 1500 US dollar handle. The foreign exchanges and precious metals numbers aren't quite updated but they're in the ballpark relative areas. Okay, within this move there hasn't been much for down moves. It's been going straight up. Buyers are in complete control of this market. There was a down day here of about 50 cents and there was a little down day here. On oh, here there was a down day, but cents here. Only two down days, like a 50 cent down day and like a and eight dollar down day that's all it has been markets overextended right now at 1500 it was overextended at 1400 as well if it goes up continuously to 1600 it would be overextended there and if it goes continuously up to 1745 well yeah you know what i'm saying overextended as well it will correct at some point knowing when that point is I certainly uh, don't know, but as a, again, buyers in control. Now that it's went up a bit though, we had this little area in here of previous resistance. Well, it's gone up enough now that if there's any kind of correction, where would I be expecting the sellers to stop their control and the buyers to regain? within this range. Of course, that's around well, even 1275 to 1350 at that point. But the upside target remains in at 1745. Usually you would expect it to have some sort of correction before it gets there, whether it goes sideways through time for a few days, whether you have a, a pullback maybe down to the 18 average. But the market's going to do what it's going to do. And if the buyers remain in control, it's uh, going to uh, keep going up. Now, what I was saying is on the break of 1400, this thing pretty much could do what it did. I was not a fan of selling in this area. And I'm only starting to become one now to profit take or try to buy back cheaper. I, but again, if this thing has the potential to go here as its next primary target, if it keeps going, well, I'm, that's exactly where I think it's uh, probably going to settle in that. Especially when I look at this on the weekly chart. Most of the time, when it breaks resistance, that was a decent pop. Breaks this one, not bad. Breaks this one. And that was not much of a pop, but now we stand breaking this level of resistance and it's not that big of an upwards, upward sized candle on the weekly that if this happens to move up here, that, that, that would look quite normal to say the least. Just like in here, you have four consecutive up weeks, all with decent sized moves that left the band. Here, it's on the third consecutive up week after leaving the band. So definitely possible upside room. Now what I found very interesting was, I don't, I don't know where to put Fibonacci lines on here. There really isn't anywhere, so I just don't want to have any on this point. So just to put on my computer so that they don't appear anywhere, I just put a negative, negative number for if I put zero in, it would have hit a line right here. If you take the Fibonacci calculation that I do, high divided by low, and in this case, it'd be almost 10, to the root of these negative uh, percentage <laughs> numbers, multiply the low, these positive numbers come in, which is interesting because when I take my Fibonacci calculator and I put the same numbers in, My downside target is 37 based on a formula I've already talked about where I do the invert of it. 
but the minus 61.8% gets that. So now I'm kind of wondering what exponent this would be on the positive time frame. So this is just things that I was just fooling around with. I, I know a decent amount about exponents, but I didn't think that the downside numbers would come if I put a negative level, but apparently it does. Of course, this has nothing to do with downside. I was just putting this in my computer to get rid of the lines. I find this stuff very, very interesting. Something to just fool around with when I have some free time. Not shown, I can't draw straight lines on here, but it's pretty obvious that it's, this is the trend line that's been going on since the uh, autumn of 2015. And it's at the upper end of this uh, trend area. And if there's a decent pull, uh, pull up or move above this, and that would be the 1700s. It brings you to an interesting situation because you're at the area where you're likely to top because you're overextended, you're at the upper end of what these trend lines would, would be in the area of. And that's a large percentage chance. I, mean, I, don't, know, I don't want to give the number because I don't know what it would be, 80, 90, even 95%. But in situations where you get to big levels like this, if you have a move here, I like to know the contrary situation for a pullback is a hog wild explosion where you could literally see like $400 moves in like a day, two or three, maybe a thousand dollar week. Those are the weird, massive, unbelievable runs that can happen. They usually occur when you go to a big, moment where markets are supposed to stop going up, but they don't. So if I ever see a situation where it goes up to the 1750 and it just doesn't go higher, okay, up to the psychological 2000, oh, it's at 22, I would be starting to think maybe 3000. If of course that happens, and I want to talk about this because this goes with any market. You go to a big situation where it should sell off. I consider 17 and change to be one of those and it doesn't then further big moves. And the same is case on the downside. If you're going down somewhere and you're supposed to find support and it doesn't and it just does that, that's normal. I guess on those rare situations when support and resistance is not found where it's supposed to. Therefore, thank you for tuning in to today's video and have yourself a magnificent day. Bye-bye.